But with the downturn in the economy starting to bite, many people, of course, looking at non-traditional areas of employment, and we like to help out here on Arvo's. So at this time each day, we put the spotlight on some of Australia's more unusual jobs, our odd jobs. Today, a woman whose passion for fashion extends to our furry friends. This week, Moscow plays host to Pet Fashion Week, and we thought it only fitting, pardon the pun, to speak to someone who works in the field, Tracy Griffiths, started making clothes for animals when the winter jacket she bought for her Burmese didn't fit. Hello, Tracy. Hi, how are you, Sienna? I'm Good very evening. well, thanks. you still got your Burmese? I sure do. He's 11 years old this year. He's my little side mate. Oh, okay, so he was a slender cat, or he is? Burmese are slender cats, and um, I guess, cut a very long story short, how it all started was um, I had him on a lead living in a unit, um, Burmese like my the harness and um, they're a lot like a dog the Burmese breed and um, he would want to go outside when he after he'd come inside and then he'd come inside because it was too cold and so I was constantly getting him off the lead on the lead off the lead and I thought this is ridiculous I need to buy him some kind of jacket this is in the middle of winter so that he feels comfortable enough to stay out there long enough anyway tell a long story short I couldn't find something that fit him so the next thing you know I bought a sewing machine, as you do for your cat, <laughs> when you have that inclination to make a jacket. And, yeah, and it just went from there. And then my fiancé came home that day, and he's like, you didn't make those jackets, and obviously I did. And so that gave me the confidence to think, well, maybe I'm onto something here, and it snowballed from there, really. Okay. Your background itself, you grew up on a farm. So the idea of putting, you know, clothes on animals isn't it wasn't, a natural thing for you, yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, it wasn't. Um, it, it wasn't that far, actually, because, you know, horses wear rugs, but mm-hmm. people don't seem to um, balk at all at that, and um, that's because of the extreme conditions, whether it be in a paddock with the harsh sun coming down on them, um, and, you know, there are some cats and dogs that don't have um, a lot of hair or even just skin, like the Devon Rex, and... Um, uh, so, you know, it wasn't fine to me to be putting clothes at that stage on animals. And, and of uh, course, we, our sheep, we put um, different jackets on them when we're going to have really bitter winter conditions. That's right, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's the opposite as well when we have rain and, um, you know, and then you've got people in the more extreme climates, um, you know, that have, I guess, the other animals like well, dogs in um, other parts of the world, like Alaska, that have to wear boots outside and things like that. So there are the practical reasons that, you know, animals actually need them to survive in whatever climate that we have them in. Um, So, yeah, there's there's a lot of practical reasons. But for me, my products are both practical, fun, and, um, you know, obviously me coming from a fashion background as well. It's a lot of fashion inspired wear. Because you modelled for a while. Yes, I still do a lot of modelling with Chadwick's. Um, It's, I guess... That wasn't really the reason why I did it. The, I, I've done modelling for probably 15 years now just because I can, and in the back of my mind and my heart, I'd always wanted to do something in the animal industry. So secretly I was hoping I'd get a TV show or something like that, you know, maybe with um, Harry's practice or something, doing something with animals. Um, but that, that seeing how that didn't come to fruition soon enough, um, yeah, I thought why not take my fashion background and marry the two and um, yeah, so I guess that gave me a little bit of a flair and an edge there. Now what do you think about Moscow having an actual pet fashion week taking that you know whole fashion idea to another level? Well it's not actually um, that shocking to me because Tokyo um, already does that as well. They have a pet fashion week and um, they incorporate models and designers fashion with humans. So with um, pet fashion as well and uh, in all honesty when I started in 2006 that was going to be my great original idea coming once again from a fashion background. I was going to launch my range um, with a big fashion show like Fashion Week in Sydney and Melbourne. Um, but, <laughs> I kept thinking Zoolander, you know, <laughs> with dogs and cats on the on the catwalk. Well, that face. They already have that face. So they've got that part dialed. So that wasn't going to be a problem. So we don't need to brief them before they go out on stage. Right. And they can have slip ups and get away with it, and that's okay. Um, but yeah, so, you know, but starting your own business and me coming from that background, I could see a big fashion show with lights and smoke and all this and that. And when you're just starting, it's very expensive and time consuming. So, and like an artist, I was never 
satisfied with my range. I'm like, oh, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I could have more. And, uh, yeah, and the next thing you know, three years later, I never got around to it. So, But we do have little fashion parades for, at pet expos and things like that where people can enter their pets and wear our Meow and Barkley fashion. So, um, how, how does your Burmese still look like its jacket? Still wearing the originals or... Has it got, you know, a wardrobe full of different tops and bottoms? <laughs> well, it's just kind of sounding like the crazy cat woman. Um, he does have a range, a vast range of, um, uh, I guess, clothes in his wardrobe. <laughs> you want to put it? I would, I'd call it more of a bag in the cupboard. But, uh, yeah, no, he doesn't mind. I mean, I wouldn't say to everyone, hey, look, clothes look great on all cats because you have to really start them when they're young to get used to it. And um, in general, cats don't like wearing clothes, but... If they're used to it and they're a breed based on the Oriental family, a lot of the Orientals, especially the Burmese, are a lot like dogs. Like I take my cat in the car with me and he comes for walks on the lead and, you know, so, and you know, there's other reasons, like just recently we moved that it's practical for dogs to wear clothes aside from the harsh um, conditions is things like ticks. Um, I've just recently discovered, which I've never been exposed to, um, ticks before, so putting on a singlet, lessens the surface area to get the ticks to attach themselves. Then there's things like shoes that everyone laughs at. Oh my God, dogs don't wear shoes, people say. But, um, you know, it's fun as well. It puts a smile on everyone's face. And on, <laughs> and on the practical side of things, my... There's four of them, so, you know, they need to get you sell more. I was having people ring me and say, do they come in sets of two or four? Um, but anyway, that started because my sister's pug is actually allergic to grass. So... I was taping baby socks to her feet and her feet would swell up and bleed from the grass. So in the end, I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous. So instead of um, just doing the general booties, um, I did something with a little bit of an edge to it. And yes, you can see those at meowandbarkley.com. And, and uh, can you describe them? What sort of edgy, <laughs> well, they're actually poor cool. boots are you making? <laughs> Well, I know you're probably going to laugh, Fiona, but um, I don't know if you know Chuck Taylors. They're at Chuck Taylors. They're actually called Chuck Tails after Chuck Taylors, which are like the converse, and they've got a, cal- a cat skull and crossbones on them. So that fashion conscious hoops that, you know, wants to look the hottest pounding the pavement. <laughs> you know, and then there's bindies and the hot pavement, and, you know, there are a lot of viewers that will be listening, or listeners that will be listening today saying, yeah, you know what, my dog doesn't like tickles, and he won't walk on the hot pavement, and so things like that. So, yeah, you know, I could go on and on and on about... That. You know what I love about it, Tracy? I understand I had a Burmese that used to, like, going for car rides more than anything. Right, yeah. And would often sneak into the car if there was a window <laughs> open That's and scary. and have a sleep on the back seat yeah. somewhere. And my mother was uh, picked up a hitchhiker one day and anyway, I was on the radio and I came on the, the radio and the cat started squawking because I could hear my voice and it was running around the car looking Aww. for me. And this man just said, look, could you please let me out? Because mum started by saying, well, that's my daughter, that's my cat. <laughs> and he's like, I just want to get out of here. So, you know, I come from a mad animal family, so I, I quite understand. <laughs> Others might find it difficult. It's the, it's the falling birth rates and the rise of a single household now. It's just, it seems to be elevating pets to the human status. So instead of people running out and spending money on um, their children and, let's say, their house, because we're, we're sort of living higher more than spreading out, um, so we've got more money to spend on our pets. And it seems to be that the pet industry at this point in time, touch wood, hasn't really been affected by the recession. Um, well, I am not can't tell you why. I don't know statistics as far as that goes, but... Um, me personally, and I know a lot of people in the pen industry haven't been affected, but I think people, uh, and it's almost like your car and your house and your clothes, people are spending more money on, let's say, designer labels, um, cause it reflects who they are as well, and, you know, like you said, it's your, it's your daughter or your son, um, you know, your pets are becoming part of the family, and, and they say around 63% of Australian households own pets, so that's, also, another part of that is $4 billion spent in the industry on pet clothes and pet food and, you know, pet accessories. So, there's a lot of room for growth and I think Australia is very new um, in this industry. Yeah, America's been into it for a while. Tracy, yeah. lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much for, for joining us and having a bit of fun this you're afternoon. You're welcome anytime, Fiona. Say hi to your Burmese. And Jesse, if you're listening, don't pee on the mat. <laughs> 
Well, I, I don't have a cat anymore. I, I've got a golden retriever who spent the night at the vets and is still there. So oh, fingers crossed, oh, she's all better. Oh, Take oh, care. Bye bye. Tracy Dresses there, a pet clothing designer on ABC New South Wales, taking our odd job spot.